Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. I'll set those dislikes. And a topic came up in my video comments uh, yesterday. I was looking through them and some of my big, regular, older, very strong, more experienced lifters were having a discussion. And one of them said, hey, you know, there's, well, there's one guy, he's done this and it's really impressive. And I know... He's a lifetime daddy. And the one, of course, reply, replied to him, come on, brother. Now, you could probably say, hey, that's a real strong guy. That's real impressive. But you don't know that he's natty. You know, and that's, that's one of the mistakes that people make in this whole industry when this topic comes up of they want to defend someone and they'll say, and he's natural. And it's like, well, well how do you know? You know, and it's the bad thing is people pull that on us when we see obvious gear users who to all of us who are experienced and we just know it's not a judgment. We're not we're not judging that person. We're just saying I saw him, that guy's on D bowl, that guy's on trend. You can look at him and tell. We just know. Right? That kind of goes with the territory of being in the iron game a really, really, really long time. It's not because that person is impressive. They could be mediocre. They could be below average. They could be mediocre even compared to naturals. But that doesn't mean we don't see the signs. And that's what people need to understand the difference. When certain people do certain things, even if they don't get particularly impressive results, we see the characteristics. We see things. Right? That just has to do with being long-term and being in, in the game a long time. You notice these things. Not a judgment call. It's not even saying that what they've done is impressive. You know, so when you do that, people say, oh, you just think everyone who's done anything impressive must be on something. No, that's actually not true. There are guys who legitimately pull off impressive things that would be even impressive for guys who use things, who don't. It does happen. It does happen. They're the exception to the rule. They're not the norm. Okay. But it's when people also pull this other thing of say, well, I know this person is natural. You're just as silly as the people who, who try to tell us, well... You can't prove that. I would look over at them and say, well, you can't prove that person is natural. You're probably pretty naive if you, if you think that just because they claim they are, you believe their sincerity that they are. And, and here's why I would say that. I, those of us who've been around this a long time, it's not just being around lifters. It's around being all sorts of athletes. I stood right there and someone before, and this many years ago, I'm not going to get into who it is, who I knew for a fact, I knew for a fact had used gear. And the whole topic came up because, you know, again, another member of his family is like, well, he's been using gear right now. It's like he needs, he's using too much stuff, right? I think it's bad for his health. Well, that came up. And I just kind of nodded like, yeah. Well, his mother and his grandmother were there. And his mother and his grandmother said he would absolutely not do that. There's no way, like they knew he was, was clean and would never even consider such a thing. In fact, he was a tested athlete, right? He was tested, and I don't mean bodybuilder level natural testing, I mean real testing. He's an actual serious athlete, right? So not only had this person passed drug tests, their own mother and grandmother were convinced they were clean. Well, I knew for a fact they weren't. Like, it wasn't even my speculation. Uh, I had had enough private conversations with them that it had come up, and I knew for a fact, unless they lied to me about their use, they'd admitted they used, right? But they could pass drug testing. They could convince their closest loved ones that they didn't. So when you look at it from that perspective, when you say, well, I know this person is clean, it's like, why? Like, why? Because they said so? Because they said so, when they actually have money or a career or bona fides or something on the line, just because they said they were? Well, I've known people who've convinced their closest loved ones, their own mother, that they were clean, who had passed numerous amounts of testing. Do you, so do you see the problem there with that? You could say, hey, this person is tested, right? That, that would be reasonable. You could look at powerlifting or bodybuilding or whatever or, or football and say they're a tested athlete. It doesn't mean they're, they're natural. It just means they're tested. Now, does that mean that they can't do as many things as someone who's untested? 
No, they've got it. They've got to pass testing. It doesn't give them an open license to do anything that they want. They have to do math. They have to be careful. They have to do all sorts of stuff if they're, if they're going to get around it. And the point I would make is that at a certain point, it's about competition not even being ethical. And we'll say, what do you mean? Let's, let's just be realistic. When you're dealing with real sports with millions of dollars on the line, if two guys of equal ability are in there, and one of them is smarter about testing, and he figures out how to get around the testing or hires the right people to help him. How's the other guy of just as equal of ability? They're, let's say they're both insanely gifted, and they usually are. You get into any elite sport, isn't everybody there really talented? I mean, let's be realistic here. Does anybody make it to the top in any sport who isn't gifted, who isn't exceptional? Of course not. So what happens when two people of equal exceptional ability and work ethic and one of them chooses to be ethical and be good and, and not cheat and then the other one finds a way to cheat successfully and you know how to get through the testing? Who's going to get the contract? Who's going to make the money? Who's going to make the extra $10 million? Okay, it shouldn't be hard to figure out. It shouldn't be hard to figure out. The only exception is when the one person is just so much more gifted than all the other truly gifted people that they, they don't have to. Okay, that's, that's very, very rare. I'm not saying they don't exist, because let's be realistic here. Everyone thinks that life is fair. Life's not fair. We're not all dealt the same hand. We are not all given the same abilities in life. We're not all given the same fairness. And, and I don't even mean uh, genetics. Genetics is part of it. But we don't all start at the same place. We don't get to all start at the same spot in the race, whatever that race happens to be, to the finish line, right? Everyone in life has a different starting point. It could be how much money you're born into, uh, a, a gift towards something, an athletic ability, a, a cognitive ability, how much money your family has, what country you're born in. You know, it, w life doesn't start fair. It doesn't start on, an, on a level playing field. That's reality. And, we, you know, we all accept that. We know that. Okay, We know that. No matter what it is that you're trying to achieve, we don't all, it's not fair. So, I mean, realistically speaking, there are people who were born with more ability than others in a given sport. And some people are born with so much more ability than others that even the truly gifted look pathetic next to them. It happens. And maybe that's the person who gets away with, they just might pull it off. They might pull it off without using anything. It does happen. Say it's rarer than you would think. Relatively rare. It happens. So we come over to that point, though. I know this person is clean. Well, why? I mean, especially when we come to whether it's YouTube or a sport or something to, to where there's money on the line. Or a person's actual career could be furthered by utilizing this stuff and then lying about it. And, like, what if they're breaking the law? Let's come to that point, too. Realistically speaking, when someone can make a lot of money by doing something and then lying about it and admitting to it would be admitting to a crime and hurt their public views and hurt their money. Like, when honesty, when being honest about something you're doing that could further your career or your income or your status in life tremendously... By doing it and just not telling people versus when people say, but but if I'm honest about it, I could lose my status and money and even, even my freedom. I might go to jail for it. You really think people are going to be honest about it? And I'm not saying some aren't, but let's be realistic here. These are people who have a legitimate reason oftentimes to be dishonest about it. When people stand there and say that a person, oh, they know that they wouldn't do it. Because of why? This is a person who has everything in the world to gain by doing it and being dishonest about it. And say, well, I trust their character. Do you know them? I mean, that's, that's the interesting thing also. People will, will say that. Well, I trust the vibe that I get off of them. That's, that's really how you go through life? Trusting the vibe that you get off of someone? You're going to be conned a lot in your life. I'm going to tell you right now, if that's legitimately the way that you perceive something like that, 
you're going to be conned and ripped off a whole lot over the next few years of your life. You're going to learn some very, very hard lessons. Because the best con men and snake oil salesmen in the world smile and make you feel special. They make you feel special. You know that they're a good person. And there are examples have been people on YouTube who you see some of the stuff that they do and people think that they're just the greatest, kindest, sweetest person in the world. And you find out maybe they're not. They really are not. Okay? Just because you think someone is a good person and therefore they, because of a public image they put out, that, that is not how you determine their honesty. Do you know that person? And I would say, how well do you know that person? Have you known them? Have you hung out with them three times? Okay. You don't know that person. Okay. Here's, here's what I would say maybe you might want to look at. Have you been friends with them for 10 years? Have you been close personal friends with them in 10 years and slept in their home a dozen times? Have you ever lived with them? Have you ever had them at a roommate? Have they stayed at your place a dozen times? Have you been around them during bad days? I'm talking about have you met them at an expo? Have you met them at a powerlifting meet? Have you met them at a bodybuilding show? Have you hung out with them for a week straight, day and night? How many times? Okay, that's what you need to be asking when you say, I know this person. Because I've also watched people convince their own mother, who does know them pretty well. So when people say, well, I just, I, I get this feeling about their personality, and that's just the way I perceive them, you're kind of a sucker. You're a sucker ready to be ripped off by people, if that's really how you, you judge it. I'm not saying we shouldn't go on gut instinct, but just because we get the perception and the feeling from seeing how they behave at an expo, if they, they're just a good, honest person, they would never lie about their gear use. You know they're natural. That's a fool talking. And I'm not saying you should just assume by default everyone's using stuff either. I'm not saying that. Because you know what? That's not fair either. It's not fair to just us to accuse everybody. But you have to have a degree of skepticism when people are pushing a product. you got to have some skepticism, guys. Not unreasonable to have some skepticism. Especially if you're going to be the, the potential consumer. Now, if you're not going to be the consumer, you weren't interested in it, maybe it doesn't matter. But, you know, at the end of the day, this, this whole idea, this naive line that people say that I... This person's natural. I know they're natural. No, no, you don't. Just like some people would argue that sometimes when we're looking at the most gifted people, people say, well, I know they're enhanced just because they're so, because of what they've achieved. Well, that's not always the case. Or what they're doing impossible outside of, of natural limits, even for their potential physiology. Well, that's when you know. Do they have a certain look that is only obtained because certain substances create that look? Okay, that, that's, that's a characteristic. Are you seeing side effects of it? Can you see their injection marks all over their body? <laughs> In addition to that, like Drug Miller. You know, I mean, you got to be realistic here, guys. There's, there's a point where you can look at them and be like, yeah, man, I'd be willing to bet my life on that level. Um, but there's also, we don't always know for sure that person is on. And, and it's equally ludicrous. It's even more ludicrous, though, to stand there and say, you know, they're, they're natural when they have every financial and social and legal reason in the world to be dishonest about it probably not a good policy in life. And you, hey, you might be right. They very well might be. But don't gamble on stuff like that and don't make a fool out of yourself by going and saying, I know they're natural. Because it's going to make you look like a moron. It makes you look like a fool. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.